Hey, welcome back everybody. Today's video is going to be a special one. It's our first viewer requested tutorial and it's brought to you by Word of the Nerd Online and her comment reads, if you could do a video on noise suppression and noise gate filters, that would be excellent. Well, I think that's an excellent idea. So let's get started. I'm Hydro from R Station Gaming and today we're going to be talking about noise gates and noise suppression. Are they worth utilizing on your stream? Are they actually effective? And if they are, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of them. So let's get started. Let's start out by talking about noise gates. A noise gate is a very harsh, brutal, and unforgiving way of removing background audio from an input signal. And to be honest, it really doesn't remove background audio. It just stops all audio from coming through the microphone that is set below your threshold setting. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you set your threshold in your noise gate to around minus 30 dB, but you usually speak around minus 50 or minus 40, basically what it's going to do is completely shut off all noise, but below that minus 30 threshold. If you speak higher than your threshold, above the minus 30 that you set, then it's going to open up and unmute and let everything through, including the background noise, fans, it doesn't matter. It's going to just open up the gate right? That's why they call it a noise gate. Again, it's very brutal and, and very unforgiving. And really the only real world applications for this are for direct input guitars, electric guitars that have uh, a chain of effects that can kind of, sometimes they can be a little noisy on the input. So you can use a noise gate to cut all that out because your guitar signal itself is much, much louder than hopefully, <laughs> hopefully than the noise that it generates. Another real world application for a noise gate is is um, live DJs in a club that have a microphone here that they like to speak into, but there's so much exterior sound coming out from uh, the PA speakers that you have to set an extremely high threshold so that when you get right up on the mic, you can trigger it, you'll go right above that threshold. Um, would I recommend it for streamers? <sighs> Mostly no. Um, it can cause a lot of havoc if, if you don't set your threshold properly. Also, if your viewer is used to hearing dead silence and then all of a sudden you speak and there's all this background noise and hissing and fans and air conditioning and whatever, uh, it, it can sound very jarring, very awkward. So let's go over here and I'm going to give you guys an example of how this can actually adversely affect you. Uh, let's go to our microphone and, and right away you can see my typical speaking threshold is around minus 15 to minus 10 dB. Uh, let's go ahead and add the noise gate filter on. And let's not worry about attack time, hold time, or release time. The defaults are fine. But what we're going to do is set this to minus 10 and minus 15. I'm going to go ahead and slide these up. So if I slide them back down, it's going to let sound through because I have set my open and close threshold to minus 20 and 24, which I'm speaking above, thank goodness. But if you start to slide these up just a little bit, we are going to start cutting out and losing audio right around. Let's see. So noise gates, in my opinion, for live streaming and even live broadcasts and podcasts are not worth using. They can cause more trouble than good. I think they're better suited for live sound applications such as DJs, live performances, uh, noisy guitar inputs, etc. So as far as noise gates for streamers, I think that's going to get a down vote for me. So now let's talk about noise suppression. Now I'm sure you guys have heard of RTX Noise, and that's a phenomenal plugin piece of software that I'm sure you've seen videos. Um, they can eliminate some insane amount of noise, blowers, grinders, um, ninja blenders. I don't know why you would be doing this on stream, but the effectiveness is very, very impressive. The only caveat to this RTX noise is that you have to own a NVIDIA GeForce RTX video card, and these are not exactly cheap. So how do we achieve the same level of noise suppression without spending a dime? 
Well, that's easy. It's already built into OBS. Check this out. Let's go to my microphone and let's go to filters. And I already have the noise suppressor engaged. There are two noise suppressors built into OBS. There's the Speaks, which is uh, actually very old and outdated. It's actually been superseded by a newer up-to-date codec called Opus. And Opus is not included or to my knowledge compatible with OBS. I know here it says lower CPU usage and I'm not sure if it's trying to compare it against RN noise or what, but uh, I don't recommend using Speaks. There's a suppression level meter here. Um, it's a very old codec and it's just not as effective as RN noise. RN noise is fantastic. It provides the same level of noise suppression, in my opinion, that the RTX noise plugin does, uh, provided from NVIDIA. It's totally free and it's, uh, it's very low impact on your CPU. So here's a couple of examples of how effective this noise suppressor can actually be in practice. Uh, we have a wine bottle opener that we actually do use quite a bit on stream. And it's, uh, it's a little, let me turn this off, I'll show you. It's a little annoying, right? But if we engage a noise suppression filter, and you really, I don't know if you can hear it in the background. Turn it off. And let's turn it back on. Now, hopefully it doesn't take you that long to open a bottle of wine, but we are kind of lazy and automated around here. Another good example is I have a glass of water with some ice in it. So let's go ahead and give this a little shake. This is without the noise suppressor. And then let's go ahead and engage the noise suppressor. Let's go ahead and turn it off and back on. So you can see this thing is super, super effective. So one thing to note about noise suppression is that it is so effective that it can inadvertently mute audio that you may not want to be muted. Sneeze, it's gonna eliminate your sneeze. It does it to me all the time. Uh, claps and snaps, farts even, I'm not kidding you, it will silence them. Well guys, I think that about wraps it up for this video on noise gates and noise suppression. Would I recommend a noise gate for your live stream? Definitely not. There's no need. Avoid it. Don't even need to think about it. Would I recommend the RN noise noise suppression filter that's built into OBS that's free? Yes. Absolutely. I can't live without it. Highly recommend it. Hope you guys found this video entertaining and got some useful information out of it. Come by and check us out on Twitch. We stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Would love to see you come by and say hello. We're always doing something goofy over there. And until next time, sayonara. Today's video is going to be a very special one. It's a my, it's a my, it's a my. Well, I think that's an excellent idea. And I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to f*** it up right there. Welcome back, everybody. F***. Would I recommend noise suppression for live streamers? Absolutely, 100%. Cannot live without it. Oh, we got a cat fight. We got a kitty standoff. It's our first viewer requested subject something. I need more coffee.